Right, welcome back. Good afternoon, Britain. It's 12.40. Now, two-thirds of Brits blame the UK's immigration policy for the outbreak of riots across the country. A new poll by Savanta shows that more people think the recent unrest was about migration rather than the Southport killings. Yes, voters were split on whether the government's response to the disorder. 49% said it went well and 43% it went badly in terms of the government's response. I must should say that in this polling, there are lots of different options that people could tick in terms of what they blame this all on. Um, but should we get the expertise of pollster and academic Matt Goodwin, who joins us here in the studio? Thank you, Matt. Um, let's just ask the basic. What does this survey show us? Well, it shows us that many people associate the protests and arrests of we recent weeks with the uh, government's immigration policy, that many people do view the protests as being directly linked to the policy of mass migration that's defined the country for the last 30 years. And this is one of the arguments I made when the riots first started, which is that many British people... Uh, even though people in Westminster don't like to think about this, but they don't feel safe in their own country. The riots and protests were, for many people, for nearly two-thirds in this survey, were about our broken borders, were about the pace of change in the country. So, yes, there was violence, there was criminality. Of course there was. Nobody has denied that. But underlying it was not just these sort of concerns over far-right thuggery, as Keir Starmer tried to have us believe, but actually these widespread concerns over migration and its impact on the country. And this, is, this has come in parallel with um, multiple polls that have shown Keir Starmer's um, approval ratings among the public mm. looking a little bit like buyer's remorse. Yeah. Um, is this suggestive of, um, and not that they necessarily will act on this, but the necessity of the Labour government to actually recognise the grievances and the reasons why there may, may have been this civil unrest, that this isn't necessarily, um, you know, just... Surely there, there may, maybe there is, is a kind of, you know, far-right hooligan element to this, mm. but there's actually a much broader context that explains this unrest and that actually the Labour government are going to have to grapple with that mm. at some point. Yeah. Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, I wrote this morning on my substack that immigration is now the number one issue in the country. So it's above the economy, it's above the NHS, it's above crime. That's a remarkable thing, given that we're in a very severe cost of living crisis. The NHS is collapsing and crime is, is visibly being bearing down on people. For the Brits to say, actually, no, immigration is my top concern, it gives you a sense of where the public mood is. And the other thing I would say is this weekend we got some other evidence from pollsters like Opinium too, which not only show that Keir Starmer's leadership ratings have collapsed since the election last month, and they really have. I mean, his net leadership rating is down 26 points with that pollster. But they also asked Brits, well, what do you think about immigration today? 66% said immigration is too high. And then they were asked, well, what do you think about how immigration has impacted the economy, has impacted public services, and has impacted our cultural life? And a larger number of Brits said it's impacted those things negatively than the number who said it's impacted those things positively. So what I would argue is... The Brits are becoming more concerned about immigration. They're becoming more sceptical about immigration at exactly the same time as Labour are now pushing the pedal down on mass immigration. May I just uh, make the point that people were asked in this survey a number of different questions about, essentially, to what extent do you think that each of the following is or is not responsible for the unrest we've seen? Lots of people, 75% saying far-right organisations are responsible, 73% saying social media companies are, 64% saying the UK's immigration policy, so yes, a large chunk saying that was to blame. Um, it goes on previous Conservative government, 53, traditional football news organisations, 51, football supporters, but, uh, 33. Uh, 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 Emily, can so I just... it's quite a range of different issues that people think yeah. are at the bottom of this. But can I just, just press back on one thing mm. here, which is in a lot of these surveys about the riots, we have had people saying, oh, it's about the far right, mm. or it's about, you know, I don't know, figures like Tommy Robinson yeah. or politicians, you know, like Nigel Farage, who I would not consider to be far right, by the way. Well, why are those figures in British politics? Those figures are in British politics because of these widespread concerns over broken borders, uh, mass migration and segregation in communities. So I, I just don't think the what we might call the mainstream conversation about these disturbances has been accurate. I think, as I have kept saying since these riots erupted, the blunt reality is many people no longer feel safe in Britain. And that is why uh, they reacted. And it's the way quite possible did. to say you to have ticked both the far right organisation box and also the immigration policy box as well. Yeah, yeah. because with these things, there are always multifactorial. Matt, in previous 
polls mm. time and time again, same at the ballot box, people have voted for less migration and they've only got more. So in this latest poll, what has changed? Mm. Are people on average more concerned about migration, even more than they were previously? Yeah. And if so, why is that? Yeah, so the first thing to say is, yes, people are much more concerned about immigration than they used to be. That's why it's the number one issue in the country today. The second thing to say is if you look at, for example, long term, what we call trackers of public opinion, um, regular surveys that have been asked by people like YouGov, what they show over time is that the, the number of people who think immigration has been too high is now at a record high. The number who think it's about right has been falling. The number who think it's having a negative impact on the country has been rising. The number who think it's having a positive impact has been falling. So if we just take a step back and look at the longer term trends, mm -hmm. Basically, what I think has happened is, you know, from 2010 onwards and through that Brexit referendum and in 2017, 2019, we've had politician after politician after politician saying we will lower the overall numbers and take back control of the borders only to do the very opposite of those things, to basically put mass migration on steroids. And this includes Starmer's government. I argued this morning, I think his ratings are collapsing, partly because he said to the Brits, look, I will smash the gags. Well, already we have record numbers of illegal migrants coming into the country on the small boats. We've now got, I think, over 131,000 people mm -hmm. in total since 2018. Starmer's also liberalising legal migration. He's increasing migration from Afghanistan. He's getting rid of the, th the salary thresholds. He's making it easier for relatives of migrants mm. to come in. He's doing the opposite, but basically, of what he said. But what would you say to those who would argue that the reason why immigration is top of concerns at the moment is because on social media people can spread, you know, the worst of the community tension. Oh, yes. People so it's, can it's, share um, information that relates to the worst examples or, you know, you get feeds of illegal migrants coming over the channel and it's all to do with social media well, pushing well, this type well, of content yeah, into your yeah, sure. algorithm. So, That's an argument you hear a lot. Absolutely. So... What I would argue is the elite conversation in the country would say this is all about misinformation. Much like they said the vote for Brexit and the vote for Trump was about misinformation. In other words, people are too stupid to know what's going on in the country. They're being misled by social media. They're being led by Elon Musk. They're being led by politicians. And therefore I, I, we don't have to listen to them. Yeah, I would push back and say actually... People are not idiots, they're not lemmings, they're not being pushed around. They can see what is happening to the country they love. They can see that they are now at risk of losing their identity, their culture and values because of policies that have been taken by both the left and the right, which they never voted for. So let me be clear, the Brits never voted for what I would consider to be an extreme policy of mass immigration. Mm -hmm. Politicians are saying voters are extremists because they're protesting. I think many people feel the Labour government is being pretty extreme in pushing the pedal down on a policy that many people oppose. Well, what is very clear is that the government won't be able to ignore it uh, for very long. Absolutely. So thank you very much indeed. Matt Goodwin, author, pollster and academic. Uh, this is Good Afternoon Britain.